All right, this is section 3.1, ladies and gents. We are talking about quadratic functions, all right? We've talked about quadratic functions a gazillion times. What makes this a quadratic is that the highest exponent is to the second power, all right? We've talked about quadratics. You guys know how to find intercepts and zeros and all that stuff. The thing about quadratics that you guys need to understand is there's two kinds of forms we're going to talk about. All right, the book calls it something a little different, but we're going to call it standard form, which is this. This is standard form, where the letter, the number in front of x squared is your a, the number in front of x is your b, and the number that's by itself is the constant, that's our c. And we're going to talk about something called vertex form. So we're going to, I'll show you that in a second. But when we talk about parabolas, they open up two different ways. They open up and they open down, okay? A positive parabola opens upwards, a negative parabola opens downwards. So this right here is called standard form. Everybody look at this. This is our standard form. Standard form. This is called vertex form, which you guys are aware of. You, we use vertex form when we're identifying all of our um, transformations. Like if I said to you what transformation, you guys would say, oh, um, something in front of the function, right? That's our vertical stretch and compression. If I have something that's minus or plus to the x inside, left and right. If I have something added or subtracted at the end, that's our up and down, remember? Mm -hmm. uh, this is a positive parabola here. How do you know it's positive? Which way is it opening? It's opening upwards. That means the number in front of x squared is positive. This parabola is opening downwards. If it's opening down, what kind of a parabola is it? It's negative. That means the number in front of x squared is negative. It could be a negative one, could be whatever, but it's negative. In our vertex form, guys, your vertex, we're going to find an x value and a y value. That's the h and the k when you plug it into this vertex form. And we're going to talk about how to find that and all that stuff in just a second. But when you talk about parabolas, the hardest thing computational-wise, like math computation, is just using a tiny little formula and figuring out what your x and y of your vertex is. Everything else you can kind of just look at and discover just by looking at the parabola. I'll show you what I mean. If I have a question like this, all right, it says let f of x equal 2x squared minus 12x plus 23. And they're going to tell me to do all these different things, all right? First of all, what kind of form is this equation in, this one right here? It's in standard form, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to answer all these questions here. Write this down. We're going we're gonna to answer which way it opens. We're going to answer what the vertex is. We're going to answer what the domain is. We're going to answer what the range is. We're going to answer y-intercept, x-intercept, and we're going to answer maximum or minimum value. And we're also going to put in vertex form. Give you guys a second to write all that down. We're going to answer all of those questions, and you're going to be able to answer all of these questions for every parabola that we do. I'm going to write little notes that tells you what to do, when and there, that sort of thing in this first section, and then we're going to actually do everything in the next section. So when I say we're going to determine which way the parabola opens, that's what I'm going to give you little hints here. You look at x squared. If it's positive, which way does my parabola open? It opens up, like this. If it's negative, which way does it open? Good, down. So be like this. Questions? Meadows. Yep. All right, to find the vertex. In order to find the vertex, you're going to find the x part of the vertex. So you're going to use x equals negative b over 2a. And then to find the y part of your vertex, you're going to plug your x value into the equation. Okay? This is our little cheat sheet. 
the domain for every single quadratic function that you will ever talk about ever in your life is negative infinity to positive infinity. If you get that wrong on a test or a quiz, I'm going to be so mad at you. Every single time you're talking about a quadratic, which is the only thing we're talking about, and I say, what's the domain? You should tell me negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, when we talk about range, range is going to be based upon the y value of your vertex. And you're going to read it in this certain way. So watch, I'm going to draw a line like this, okay? Just say the y part of my vertex was y equals 6. Okay, just, just, just say. If I drew, if I know that my parabola is positive, you guys can tell me right now what the range is because this is positive infinity up here and this is negative infinity. So in this case, where does my parabola exist? From negative infinity to 6 or from 6 to infinity? Where do you see it? 6 to infinity. That would be your range. So if I had a negative parabola, again, say this was y equals 6, whatever it is, and it was like this, and I said to you guys, what's the range? Is it from negative infinity to 6 or from 6 to infinity? See, that's how you read the range, just by looking at it. All right, when I talk about y-intercepts, guys, y-intercepts is when you plug 0 in for x. The beauty about a quadratic is that if I plug 0 in for x, that means my x squared is 0 and so is the x. So your y-intercept is the constant. It's just the constant of the equation. When you talk about x-intercepts, x-intercepts, you're going to plug in 0 for y. And you guys have done this since Algebra 1 because what we do in that case is you're going to have to factor, which we love, so it's cool. Your maximum and minimum value is the y part of the vertex. And you can tell just by looking. If I have a positive parabola, is this right here a maximum or a minimum? Is that the lowest that the parabola goes or the highest? It's the lowest, so you'd have a minimum. If I have a negative parabola, this point right here is at the highest or the lowest, so that you'd have a maximum. And then your vertex form is this equation that you guys need to know. A times x minus h squared plus k. A, you can figure out by looking at your original equation, and then h and k is your vertex. Now, I know you guys are like, oh my gosh, that's so much. You guys have all seen this before. We're going to go through a couple problems, and I'm just going to work going through the list of, okay, how do I find this? How do I find that? How do I find this? And it will be easier, I promise. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to take this equation. I have f of x equals 2x squared. What is it? Minus 12x plus 23. And we're going to find all this stuff. We're going to find which way it opens. We're going to find the vertex. What else do I have on there? Domain and range. X and Y intercepts. And vertex form, right? All right, we can answer two of these questions, three of these questions, just by looking at your problem. Which direction does my parabola open? Up. How do you know it opens up? Because 2x squared is positive. So I'm going to draw myself a little picture because that helps me remember. All right, I can't just look at it and tell you the vertex. We've got to figure that out. But I can tell you the domain. What's the domain of every single parabola we're ever going to talk about in life? Negative infinity, good, to positive infinity. I can also tell you right now what the y-intercept is. How do you find the y-intercept? You plug in 0 for x, right? But what did I tell you the y-intercept always is? The constant. What's the constant? 
23, so your intercept would be at 0, plug in 0 for x, and 23. Good. Okay, we just figured out three things just by looking at the problem. If I ask you if there's a maximum or minimum point, is there a maximum here or a minimum? How, why is there a minimum? You're right. Because it's an up parabola. There's my minimum point right there. We'll figure out what it is. But you can answer half of these questions, guys, just by looking at the parabola. Now, in order to find the vertex, right, it's a tiny little formula we have to use. That tiny little formula is x equals negative b over 2a. So tell me right now over here, what is my a term? What is my b term? What is my c term? What is a in this parabola, this equation? A is positive 2. It's the number in front of x squared. What is my b? Negative 12. Perfect. And what is my c? 23. So to find the x part of my vertex, I'm going to say negative, negative 12, agreed, divided by 2 times 2. What's negative, negative 12? Positive 12 divided by 2 times 2 is 4. So what is the x part of my vertex? It's 3. So I'm going to write 3 comma. Now how do we find the y? What I tell you to do? No, how do you find the y part of your vertex? This equation says y equals 2x squared minus 12x plus 23. Because remember, f of x is just a fancy way of saying y. You just plug in the 3 that we just found. Perfect. So I say 2 times 3 squared minus 12 times 3 plus 23. Now we evaluate. 3 squared is 9, and 9 times 2 is... 18 minus 12 times 3 is 36 plus 23. Now, left to right. Ne 18 minus 36 is negative 18 plus 23 gives me 5. So my vertex is at 3 comma 5. Now we can answer everything else just by looking at what we have. It's hard to see. Let's talk about the range. Okay, think about it. It's, the, it's based upon the y part of your vertex. So this is at y equals 5. You guys told me this was a positive parabola or a negative one? Positive. So it's going to look like this. So what is my range? Is it between negative 5 and infinity? Sorry, negative infinity and 5? Or between 5 and infinity? Where, do, where does my parabola exist? 5. It includes it to infinity. We always have a parenthesis on infinity. So you can also say that where your minimum is. Your minimum is at y equals, what's the y part of your vertex? 5. We can put this. This is our standard form. Let's go to vertex form, okay? Our vertex form, remind yourself if you need to, f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So my vertex form is going to be f of x equals, what is my a term? 2 times x minus, what's h? What's the x part of my vertex? 3 squared, and then what's the y part of my vertex? Plus 5. Perfect. So if you were, if you were to square x minus 3, times it by 2, then add 5, you'd end up with this up here, 2x squared minus 12x plus 23. Now, the one thing that we're missing is the x-intercepts. Guys, I told you, x-intercepts. How do you find x-intercepts? We've done this a jillion times. f of x equals 2x squared minus 12x plus 23. You plug in 0 for y, so I have 0 equals 2x squared minus 12x plus 23. What, is, what kind of a problem is this? How would you figure out what x was? We have to factor. Okay, for the sake of time, this one does not factor. Pretty. So if it doesn't factor, what do we have to use? If something doesn't factor pretty, what do we use? What's that formula we use if it doesn't factor pretty? 
the quadratic formula, okay? In this case, you would have to use a quadratic formula. I'm not going to right now. I'll do it at the end of this video just so you guys can see it. But for the sake of time, I want to go over some more examples. But you would have to find your intercepts using the quadratic formula. That's only if it doesn't factor. The next one we do will factor nice and pretty, and it's easy. Okay, so let's go through another example. Whoops. We're going to get the hang of this one. Don't worry about what any of this stuff says. Oh, this is another gross one. I'll do this one at the end of the video. Well, no, we can do, well, let's find the vertex. Let's just practice doing some things. Let's find the vertex. Yeah. How do you find the vertex? That's all we're going to do in this one is find the vertex. How do you find the vertex? How do you find the X part? X equals what? How do you find? What's the little tiny formula? Perfect. Negative B over 2A. All right. What's my A term here? Five. What's my B term? Perfect. What's my C term? 49. So just by looking at this, you guys can tell me, first of all, what's the domain for every single quadratic we're ever going to talk about in life? Negative infinity, positive infinity. What is the y-intercept? Where does this function cross the y-axis? At 49. Good. 0, 49. Which way does this parabola open, up or down? Up. Perfect. So does it have a maximum? Look, if it opens up, does it have a maximum or a minimum value? Good job. So if I'm going to try and find my vertex, which is all I want to do here, I'm going to say negative, negative 30, divided by 2 times a, which is 5. 30 divided by 10 is what? 3. So my vertex, that's all I'm worried about right now, is that 3 comma what? Well, how do we find the y part? Plug it into the equation. Okay, so I have 5 times 3 squared minus 3 times 30 plus 49. 3 squared is 9, and 9 times 5 is 45, minus 90 plus 49, right? So negative 45 plus 49, what's my y value? 4. So my vertex is at 3, comma 4. If I was going to write this equation, go from standard to vertex form, my vertex form is a times x minus h squared plus k. I know I told you we were only doing one thing, but I lied. Because it's really easy to find all the other stuff. <laughs> oh, I'm so funny. Um, <laughs> how, what would this look like in vertex form? f of x equals, what's my a term? 5 times x minus, what's the x part of my vertex? 3 squared plus, what's the k part of my vertex? Yep. There's vertex form. So Nick, do you see what I'm talking about? How it seems like, oh my gosh, that's so much. But you really can find a ton of information just by finding the vertex. Does that make sense? Good. Good talk. Good talk. All right, here we go. We're going to find everything with this parabola. So let's think about what we need to know. We need to know which way it opens, which you already know. Oh, my Apple Pencil is about to die. So vertex, we're going to find our maximum and minimum. We're going to find x-intercept. We're going to find the y-intercept. We're going to find the domain. We're going to find the range, and we're going to do vertex form. Oh my gosh, Mrs. Meadows, you're such a slave driver making us do all this stuff. It's not that bad. You can do half of these things just by looking at it. Which way is my parabola going to open? Why is it down? Because it's negative. Good. So does that mean I have a minimum point or a maximum point? I have a maximum. It's going to be at y equals whatever part of the vertex is. I can't just look at this and tell me the x-intercept, but I can look at it and tell me what the y is. Yep, it crosses at 0, comma 2. Good. I can look at this and say what the domain is. It's negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, we answered half of our questions just by looking. So let's go through here. Let's identify what our a, b, and c are. A is, a is negative 1. B is 1, and C is 2, right? C 
So let's find our vertex. To find the vertex, we use x equals negative b over 2a. So I have negative 1 over 2 times negative 1, correct? So negative 1 over negative 2. The x part of my vertex is at 1 half. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe I have a fraction. Should we just stop? It's too hard, we can't do it. No, we can do it, come on. Y equals, we're gonna plug it in, negative x squared plus x plus two. So I have negative one half squared plus one half plus two. When you square a fraction, that squared goes to both the numerator and the denominator. So this becomes negative one squared is one, two squared is four, plus one half plus two, and that's over one. Let's get a common denominator. What's a common denominator between four, two, and one? Perfect. So my negative one stays here. In order to make my denominator of two a four, I multiply by two, which you do to the bottom, you do to the top, so I have two. To make one become a four, I multiply by four, which you do to the bottom, you do to the top, so I have eight. Because when you square one half, Right, it becomes positive one over positive four, but that negative sign's out in front. So that negative sign's not included in it, it goes out in front of it. Now when we simplify, guys, what is negative one plus two? One plus eight, nine. So my vertex is at one half comma nine fourths. So that means I have a minimum value at nine fourths. When I talk about my range, this is at y equals 9 fourths, right? We said this opens which way, up or down? Down. So what is your range from negative infinity to 9 fourths or from 9 fourths to infinity? Bottom, I agree with where you're looking, but you read from bottom to top. So we'll say negative infinity to 9 fourths, and we'll have a nice bracket on there. Now, before we find the x-intercepts, because that's going to require us to factor, let's do our vertex form. Remember, vertex form is f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. In this case, guys, what is my a term? Negative 1, good, times x minus, what is the x part of my vertex? 1 half squared plus, what is the y part or the k of my vertex? 9 fourths. Good. So again, we've answered every single question except one by doing one tiny formula of negative b over 2a and then substituting a value in. Now the last thing we're going to do is find our x-intercepts. So I say 0, whoops, 0 equals negative x squared plus x plus 2. Before I factor this, we don't like when our quadratic begins with a negative, correct? So let's just factor out our negative one. So I have x squared minus x minus two equals zero. Are there factors of negative two that'll multiply to give me negative two but add to give me negative one? Multiply to give me negative two but add to give me negative one. Negative two, positive one, good. So I have two intercepts. One is at x equals 2, and one is at x equals negative 1. So we would write it as my x-intercepts are at 2 comma 0 and negative 1 comma 0. So we just answered all of these lovely questions by generally, mathematically, the hardest thing we had to do was plug a fraction into an equation and simplify. Questions? You guys okay? All right, last one. Um, all they ask for here is minimum and maximum values. So in this case, and I'll finish this um, once we leave here, you're gonna find the vertex, all right? You find your vertex, and then once you find the vertex, your minimum and maximum value is based upon the Y part of your vertex. That's how you would find that. I'm actually probably going to just go through this whole thing 
and find every little piece. I'll find which way it opens, domain range, all that stuff, just so you guys have some extra practice to look at. But I'll do that later because you guys only have two more minutes. Okay, so. Okay, guys, so for these problems on A and B, they're asking you in this question just to find the minimum and maximum values, but we're going to go ahead and find everything. So letter A, f of x equals x squared plus 4x. So we are going to determine which way the parabola opens. The vertex. We're going to find our maximum minimum value. We're going to find domain, range, y-intercept, x-intercept, <clears throat> and our vertex form. So let's go through and figure out what we can identify just by looking at our equation. So I know that since x squared is positive, this is going to open upwards. I can't just look at it and tell my <clears throat> vertex, but I can tell that there's going to be a minimum value, a bottom, and it's going to be at y equals whatever part of the vertex is. Our domain for every parabola we see in life is negative infinity to positive infinity. We don't know our range just yet, but we will in a second. Our y-intercept is the constant, whatever's being added or subtracted. In this case, there's nothing there, so your y-intercept is going to be at 0, 0. Our x-intercepts we'll figure out in a second, and then vertex form. So to find our vertex, we say x equals negative b over 2a. In our case here, a, the number in front of x squared is 1, b, the number in front of x is 4, and our constant is 0. So I'm going to say negative 4 over 2 times 1. So negative 4 over 2, x equals negative 2. So the x part of my vertex is negative 2. That's our h value. To find the y part, we say y equals x squared plus 4x. So we take our x value and plug it in. So I have negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2. So 4 plus <clears throat> negative 8, 4 minus 8, I have y equals negative 4. So the y part of my vertex is negative 4. That means I have a minimum value at negative 4. That means our range, this value is going to be y equals a negative 4. And since my parabola is positive, it's opening upwards. So my parabola exists up here, which would be from negative 4 to infinity. So we can write our vertex form. Remember, vertex form is f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So the a term that we have here was 1. So we have f of x equals 1. You don't have to write it. You can just leave it, but 1. Then x minus the h. That's the x part of our vertex. So it would be negative 2. So that's going to become plus 2 squared. And then we need the y part of our vertex, which would be minus 4. And then lastly, to find the x-intercepts, we plug in 0 for y. So we'll have x squared plus 4x equals 0. So we'll factor this, take out an x. I'm left with x plus 4 equals 0. Set each piece equal to 0. So I have x-intercepts at 0 and negative 4. And we would write our x-intercepts at 0, 0, and at negative 4, 0. <clears throat> now we're going to do the same exact thing with the second equation. So let's write it. It's g of x, this is letter b, equals negative 2x squared plus 4x minus 5. And again, we're going to find all of the things, which way this parabola opens, the vertex, max and min, domain, range, y-intercept, x-intercept, and vertex form. So first thing I'm going to do is say which way this parabola opens. And since it's a negative in front, it's opening down. That means I'm going to have a maximum value at y equals whatever the y part of the vertex is. 
my domain for every parabola is negative infinity to positive infinity. My y-intercept is our constant, so I have a y-intercept at 0, comma, negative 5. Now to find the vertex, we use that tiny little formula, x equals negative b over 2a. So in our case here, our a is negative 2, b is 4, and c is negative 5. So we're going to say x equals negative 4 divided by 2 times negative 2. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 is positive 1. So the x part of my vertex is at positive 1. In order to find the y part, we just substitute in that value for x. So I have negative 2 x squared plus 4 x minus 5. So I have negative 2 times 1 squared plus 4 times 1 minus 5, negative 2 plus 4 minus 5, negative 2 plus 4 is 2 minus 5, so y equals negative 3. So the y part of my vertex is negative 3, then I know that my maximum value is that y equals negative 3. So I now can look at my range, and this is y equals negative 3. Since this is a negative parabola, it exists down here. So my range would be from negative infinity to negative 3. <clears throat> my vertex form is going to be f of x equals my a term, which is negative 2, times x minus 1, which is the x part of my vertex, squared, minus 3, which is the y part of the vertex. And then the last thing we would do is find the x-intercept, so we have to factor. Negative 2x squared plus 4x minus 5 equals 0. We don't like when x squared is negative, so divide out a negative 1. 2x squared minus 4x plus 5 equals 0. So we're going to say, okay, a times c. Well, 2 times 5 is 10. Are there factors of 10 that will multiply to give you 10 and add to give you negative 4? Um, our factors would be 1 and 10, 2 and 5, so this is not going to factor pretty. That means we need to use the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. So I'm going to have a is 2. B is negative 4 by sweetie, C is 5. So I have negative, negative 4, plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared, minus 4 times, bye honey, 2 times 5, divided by 2 times 2. Okay, so as we, okay. as we simplify this, I have 4 plus or minus the square root. Negative 4 squared is 16. Minus 4 times 2 is 8, times 5 <clears throat> would be 40, all over 4. As we simplify a little more, I get 4 plus or minus the square root, <coughs> excuse me, 16 minus 40, negative 24, all over 4. Now guys, when we find x-intercepts, x-intercept means where the graph crosses the x-axis. I do not have to go any further here because when I have a negative underneath the square root, that means I'm going to have an imaginary answer. It's not a real answer. So you can stop right there, and for x-intercepts, you can write none. There are no places on the graph that this parabola is going to cross the x-axis. Now, last thing I wanted to do from first problem Everything worked out fine, but it didn't factor. <clears throat> so I just wanted to show you, this is my A term would be two, my B term is negative 12, and my C term is 23. So again, we're gonna have to do the quadratic formula. So X equals negative, negative 12, plus or minus the square root of negative 12 squared minus four times A times C, all over two times two. So as we simplify, I have positive 12 plus or minus the square root. 12 squared is 144 minus 4 times 2 is 8 times 23. And I get 184 divided by 4 
So I simplify again, I have 12 plus or minus, and then 144 minus 184. And I get negative 40 divided by four, and I can stop right there. Why can I stop right there? Because when I'm talking about x-intercepts, I need real answers. If I have the square root of a negative number, this is going to give me an imaginary number. Take the square root of a negative number, you get an imaginary. So your answer for this one would be no x-intercepts. Or you can write next to x-intercepts, you can write the word none. But make sure you guys are practicing this. I would look over your <clears throat> web assign this weekend. Don't wait until Monday night to do it. You're going to have Monday in class to ask questions. So please do. Have a great weekend, guys. Bye.